Hello, everyone. I'm going to be reading from the Everyday Life Bible. I'm reading Matthew chapter 24, 25, and 26. Chapter 24. Jesus departed from the temple area and was going on his way when his disciples came up to him to call his attention to the buildings of the temple and point them out to him. But he answered them, Do you see all these? Truly, I tell you, there will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. While he was seated on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately and said, Tell us, when will this take place, and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end, the completion, the consummation of the age? Jesus answered them, Be careful that no one misleads you, deceiving you and leading you into error. For many will come in on the strength of my name, appropriating the name which belongs to me, saying, I am the Christ, the Messiah, and they will lead many astray. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. You will see that you are not frightened or troubled, for this must take place, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be families and earth, or excuse me, famines and earthquakes in place after place. All this is but the beginning, the early pains of the birth pains of the intolerable anguish. Then they will hand you over to suffer affliction and tribulation and put you to death. And you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended and repelled and will begin to distrust and desert him whom they thought they ought to trust and obey and will stumble and fall away and betray one another and pursue one another with hatred. Hold on one second. Let me change this sliding and let me get a bookmark to mark my way. This is very interesting stuff and I don't want to mess up. I'm up to verse 11. And many false prophets will rise up and deceive and lead many into error. And the love of the great body of people will grow cold because of the multi multiplied lawlessness and iniquity. But he who endures to the end will be saved. And this good news of the kingdom, the gospel, will be preached throughout the whole world as a testimony to all the nations and then will come to the end. So when you see the appalling sacrilege, the abomination that astonishes and makes desolate, spoken of by the prophet Daniel, standing in the holy place, let the reader take notice and ponder and consider and heed this Daniel verse or chapter 9 verse 27 11 through 31 and then 12 chapter 12 verse 11 then let those who are in judah flee to the mountains judea flee to the mountains let him who is on the horizon on the housetop not come down and go into the house to take anything and let him who is in the field not turn back to get his overcoat. And alas, for the woman, women who are pregnant and for those who have nursing babies in those days, pray that your fl flight may not be in winter or on a Sabbath. For then there will be a great tribulation, affliction, distress, or oppression such 
as has not been from the beginning of the world until now. No, and never will be again. And if those days had not been shortened, no human being would endure and survive. But for the sake of the elect, God's chosen ones, those days will be shortened. We're up to verse 23. If anyone says to you, then behold, here is the Christ, the Messiah, or there he is, do not believe it, for false Christs and false prophets will arise, and they will gr show great signs and wonders as to deceive and lead astray, if possible, even the elect, God's chosen ones. See, I have warned you beforehand. So if they say to you, behold, he is in the wilderness desert, do not go out there if they tell you, Behold, he is in the secret places or inner rooms. Do not believe it. For just as the lightning flashes from the east and shines and is seen as far as the west, so will the coming of the Son of Man be. Wherever there is a fallen body, a corpse, there the vultures or eagles will flock together immediately after the tribulations of those days the sun will be darkened and the moon will not shed its light and the stars will fall from the sky and the powers of the heavens will be shaken then the sign of the son of man will appear in the sky and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn and be and beat their breasts and lay make in anguish. And they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory in brilliancy and splendor. And he will send out his angels with a loud trumpet call and they will gather his elect his chosen ones from the four winds even from one end of the universe to the other from the fig tree learn this lesson as soon as its young shoots become soft and tender and it pulls out its leaves you know of a surety that summer is near so also when you see these signs all taken together coming to pass you may know of a surety that he is near at the very doors truly i tell you this generation the whole multitude of people living at the same time in a definite given period will not pass away till all of these things taken together take place sky and earth will pass away and my words will not pass away. But of the of that day, the hour no one knows, even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Up to verse uh, 37. As were the days of Noah, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For trust as in those days before the flood, there were eating and drinking, marrying, being given in, or men and women given in marriage until the very day when Noah went into the ark. And they did not know or understand until the flood came and swept them all away. So will be the coming of the Son of Man. At that time, two men will be in the field one will be taken, one will be left. Two women will be grinding at the hand mill, one will be taken, one will be left. Watch therefore, for you do not know in what kind of a day your Lord is coming. But understand this, had the householder known in what
part of the night, whether in a night or a morning, watch the thief was coming, he would have watched and would not have allowed his house to be undermined and broken into. You also must be ready. Therefore, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour when you do not expect him. Who then is the faithful, thoughtful, and wise servant whom his master has put in charge of his household to give to the others the food and supplies at the proper time? Blessed is that servant whom when his master comes, he will find so doing. I solemnly declare to you, he will set him over all of his possession. He will set over all of his possessions. But if that servant is wicked and says to himself, my master is delayed and is going to be gone a long time. And become and begins to beat his fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunkard. The master of the, that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him and at an hour of which he is not aware and will punish him and put him with the pretenders. There will be weeping and grinding of teeth. That was chapter 24. I've been reading for about 12 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and try to read chapter 25 and chapter 26. Chapter 25. Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. For when the foolish took their lamps, they did not take any oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil along with them with their lamps. While the bridegroom lingered and was slow in coming, they all began nodding their heads and they fell asleep. But at midnight, there was a shout, Behold, the bridegroom, go out to meet him. Then all those virgins got up and put their own lamps in order. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, there will not be enough for us and for you. Go instead to the dealers and buy for yourselves. But while they were gone, while they were going away to buy, the bridegroom came and those who were prepared went in with him to the marriage feast and the door was shut. Later, the other virgins came, also came. And said, Lord, Lord, open the door to us. But he replied solemnly, I declare to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, attention and be cautious and active. For you know neither the day nor the hour when the Son of Man will come. For it is like a man who was about to take a long journey and he called his servants together and entrusted them with his property to one he gave five talents talents to another two to another one to each in proportion to his own personal ability then he departed and left the country he who had received the five talents went at once and traded with them and he gained five talents more. And likewise, he who had, been, had received two talents, also, he also gained two talents more. But the one who had received the one talent went and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. Now, after a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. And he who had received the five talents came and brought him the five more saying master you entrusted me with me with five talents see here i have gained five talents more 
his master said to him, well done, you upright, honorable servant. You have been faithful and trustworthy over a little. I put you in charge of much. Enter into the sh and share the joy which your master enjoys. And he also and he also who had the two talents came forward saying, Master, you entrusted entrusted two talents to me. Here I have gained two more talents. The master said to him, Well done, you upright faithful servant. You have been faithful and trustworthy over a little. I put, will put you in charge of much. Enter into and share the joy which your master enjoys. He who had received one talent also came forward saying, Master, I knew you to be a harsh and hard man, replying, Where did not so and gather where you had not when known? Okay. So I was afraid and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is your own. But his master answered him, You wicked and lazy and idle servant, did you indeed know that I reap where I have not sowed and gather where I have not windowed? Then you should have invested my money with the bankers, and at my coming I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent away from him and give it to the one who has the ten talents. For to everyone who has will more be given, and he will be furnished richly, so that he will have an abundance. But from the one who does not have even what he has, what does have will be taken away. And throw the good for nothing servant into the outer darkness. There will be weeping and grinding of teeth. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All nations will be gathered before him and he will separate them from one another. A shepherd separates his sheep from the goats. He will cause the sheep to stand at his right hand, but the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, and appointed to eternal salvation, inherit it, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you brought me together with yourselves and welcomed and entertained and lodged me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me with help and ministering care. I was in prison and you came to see me. Then the just and upright will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when he did, when, and when did we see you a stranger and welcomed and entertained you or naked and clothed you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and came to visit you? And the king will reply to them, Truly I tell you, in so far as you did it for one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it for me. Then he said to those at his left hand, Be gone from me, you cursed into eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me or entertain me. I was naked and you did not clothe me. 
I was sick and in prison and you did not visit me with help and ministering care. Then they also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister to you? And he will reply to them, solemnly I declare to you, in so far as you failed to do it for the least in the estimation of men of these you failed to do it for me then they will go away into eternal punishment but those who are just and upright and in right standing with God into eternal life when Jesus had this starts chapter 26 I'm sorry when Jesus had ended this discourse he said to his disciples, you know that the Passover is in two days and the Son of Man will be delivered up treacherously to be crucified. Then the chief priests and the elders of the people gathered in the court of the palace of the high priest, whose name was Capricious and consulted together in order to arrest Jesus by strategizing secretly and putting him to death. But they said, it must not be during the feast for fear that there will be a riot among the people. Now, when Jesus came back to Bethany and was in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came up to him and with an alabaster flask a very precious perfume and she poured it on his head as he reclined at table and then the disciples saw it and when the disciples saw it they were indignant saying for what purpose is all this water all this waste for this perfume might have been sold for a larger sum and the money given to the poor. But Jesus, fully aware of this, said to them, Why do you bother the woman? She has done a noble thing to me, for you always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. In pouring this perfume on my body, she has done something to prepare me for my burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever this good news is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will be told also in memory of her. Then one of the twelve, who was called Judas, went to the chief priests and said, what are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? And they weighed out for and paid to him 30 pieces of silver, about $21.60. Wow. And from the moment he sought a fitting opportunity to betray him, now on the first day of unleavened bread, Passover week, the disciples came to Jesus and said to him, where do you wish us to prepare for you to eat the Passover supper. He said, go into the city to a certain man and say to him, the master says, my time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. And accordingly, the disciples did at Jesus had to, as Jesus had directed them and they made ready the Passover supper. When it was evening, he was reclining at table with the 12 disciples. And as they were eating, he said solemnly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. They were exceedingly pained and distressed and deeply hurt and sorrowful and began to say to him one after another, surely it cannot be I, Lord, can it? He replied, he who has dipped his hand in the same dish with me will betray me. The son of man is going just as it is written of him, but woe to that 
man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed, it would have been better for that man if he had never been born. Judas the betrayer said, Surely it is not I, is it, Master? He said to him, You have stated. Now as they were eating, Jesus took bread and praising God gave thanks and asked him to bless it to their use. And when he broke it, he gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink all of it, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is being poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I say to you, I shall not drink again of this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it with you new and of superior quality in my father's kingdom and when they had sung a hymn they went out to the Mount of Olives that then Jesus said to them you will all be offended and stumble and fall away because of me this night for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, again, raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter declared to him, though they all are offended and stumble and fall away because of you, I will never do so. Jesus said to him solemnly, I declare to you this very night before a single rooster crows you will deny and disown me three times Peter said to him even if I must die with you I will not deny or disown you and all the disciples said the same thing then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane and he told his disciples sit down here while I go over yonder and pray and taking him with and taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee he began to show grief and distress of mind and was deeply depressed then he said to them my soul is very sad and deeply grieved so that I am almost dying of sorrow stay here and keep awake and keep watch with me and going a little further, he threw himself upon the ground on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass away from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but as you will and desire. And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, What? Are you so utterly unable to stay awake and keep watch with me for one hour? All of you must keep awake. Be uh, must keep awake and watch and pray that you may not come into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, a second time, he went away and prayed, "My father, if this cannot pass by unless I drink it." your will be done and again he came and found them sleeping for their eyes were weighted down with sleep so leaving them again he went away and prayed for the third time using the same words then he returned to the disciples and said to them are you still sleeping and taking your rest Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of especially wicked sinners. Who's... Oh, get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. As he still was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, came up, and with him a great crowd with swords and clubs, from the chief priests and elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I shall kiss is the man. Seize him. And he came up to Jesus at once and said, Hail, Master. 
and he embraced him and kissed him with warmth and devotion. Jesus said to him, friend, for what are you here? Then they came up and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. And behold, one of those who were who were with Jesus reached out his hand and drew his sword, striking the body servant of the high priest, cut off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, put your sword back into its place for all who draw the sword will die by the sword. Do you suppose that I cannot appeal to my father and he will immediately provide me with more than 12 legions. But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled that it must come to pass? It must come about this way. At that moment, Jesus said to the crowds, have you come out with swords and clubs clubs and swords against a robber to capture me day after day I was accustomed to sit in the porches and courts of the temple teaching and you did not arrest me but all this has taken place in order that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled then all the disciples deserted him and fleed escaped but those who had seized Jesus took him away to Catechus the high priest where the scribes and the elders had assembled but Peter followed them at the at a distance as far as the courtyard of the high priest's home he even went inside and sat with the guards to see the end now the chief priest and the whole council sought to get false witness to testify against Jesus so that they might put him to death. They, but they found none. Though many witnesses came forward, at least two men came forward and testified, this fellow and I am able to tear down the sanctuary of the temple of God and to build it up again in three days. That, and the high priest stood up and said, have you no answer to make? What about this? These men testify against you. But Jesus kept silent and the high priest said to him, I call upon you to swear by the living God and tell us whether you are the Christ, the son of God. Jesus said to him, you have stated more than that, I tell you, you will in the future see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the Almighty and coming on the clouds of the sky. Then the high priest tore his clothes and exclaimed, he was uttered blasphemy. He has uttered blasphemy. What news have we of further evidence? You have now heard his blasphemy. What do you think now? They answered, he deserves to be put to death. Then they spat in his face and struck him with their fists and some slapped him in the face saying, prophesy to us, you Christ, who was it that struck you? Now, Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard and one maid came up to him and said, you were also with Jesus, the Galilean, but he denied it falsely before them all saying, I do not know what you mean. And then he had gone out to the porch. Another maid saw him and she said to the bystanders, this fellow was with Jesus, the Nazarene. And again, he denied it and disowned him with an oath saying, I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, you certainly are one of 
them too, for even your accent betrays you. Then Peter began to invoke a curse on himself and to swear, I do not even know the man. And at that moment, a rooster crowed. And Peter remembered Jesus' words when he had said, Before a single rooster crows, you will deny me and disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. That's the end of chapter 26. That took 35 minutes to read. I just want you to know that it was put on my heart today to read these chapters to you and for myself. I haven't read them in years. So read your Bibles, praise God, and remember, God bless everyone. Thank you.